Hi, last episode was about staircases. Today we are going to talk about ramps. But before we start today's episode, if you would like to download any of the tutorial files that I show in my videos, you may go to my website learningrevitonline.com. This is a free learning resource and you can download all the tutorial files to complete the sample project file from here. I'm going to provide you the link in the description box. So let's get started with episode 26. In my project, my car is going to enter using this entrance, which is why I would like to create a ramp that starts from ground floor and goes all the way down to the basement floor where I'm going to create my car park. The difference between the two levels is approximately 2.7 meters. Let's go into architecture tab and use ramp tool. Before creating my ramp, I would first set up the height for my ramp. So my base level is the basement floor level and my top of my ramp is going to be the ground floor. So my ramp is going to go all the way up from the basement towards the ground floor zero level. Typically a width of a ramp designed for cars would be somewhere around 2.7 meters. Let's see if we have enough space in our project to create a 2.7 meters wide ramp. In this direction we have enough space for creating a 2.7 meters wide ramp. How about this one? Here also we have sufficient space. So I'm going to create the width of my ramp as 2.7 meters. Now let's go into the type properties and set the thickness of our ramp as about 0.2 meters. You can assign a material to your ramp. In this case, let's assign a concrete material. And I'm going to say OK to this. The maximum inclined length and ramp maximum slope. These are the two very important parameters that you need to set before you create your ramp. So the maximum inclined length really indicates how long your car could travel in an inclined direction before you need to stop and create a landing. So let's find out how much space do we really have. So in this direction I have about 10 meters of space here. And in this direction the maximum inclined length I can provide is about 13 meters before I need to stop create a landing to turn my car in this direction. So let's go into type properties and create 13 meters as my maximum inclined length. The maximum slope I'm going to create a ramp of about 1 is to 8 which is generally comfortable for a car to go into a parking area. I'm going to say OK to this and now I'm ready to create my ramp. I'll go into my run method, use my straight line tool and let's start somewhere around in this point. As you move your cursor down, you will see a little gray text below which is saying 0 meters of inclined ramp created and 21.68 meter remaining. Revit is able to automatically calculate the total inclined length which is required to go from basement to the ground at 1 is to 8 meter slope. So I need total of 21 meters of inclined length to go from basement to the ground. So let's stop somewhere around here. So it says that about 10 meters of inclined ramp created and 11 remaining. I stopped at this point because we will need a landing before we can really start our next run at this point and end here. When we create two runs, the landing is created automatically in between. It's very much similar to what we saw in staircases in our last episode. The green line represents boundary lines. The blue lines represents your run line and the black lines represent your riser from where your slope is going to change. You can always come back and select your run if you would like to make changes to its position. Let's select this run and move it slightly on the right using my arrow key. On this point, I would like to create a turning radius at my landing. So I would go into boundary lines and use my fillet arc to create a fillet between my two boundary lines. Let's create a little fillet over here as well. So let's finish our ramp and go into 3D view to check. And let's hide all of these walls temporarily so that we can see our ramp clearly. If you do not need railing, you can always come back to your ramp, select your railings and delete them. So now we have a ramp that goes from basement. It stops at this point. We have a landing. And then again, it goes from this point onwards to the ground floor. 
If you go into the type properties of your RAM, you also have an option of creating the shape instead of thick into a solid. This kind of RAM is generally used for landscape purposes or for conceptual design purposes or for site developments. Let's go back to the type properties and change our shape back to thick. One limitation of creating ramps using the RAM tool is that if you're creating your model for quantification purposes, ramps really don't quantify very well. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go and create a sh schedule of ramps. Here, I really do not have any fields that automatically calculate areas or volumes. So let's go back and create a material takeoff of ramps. Here, however, I really do have material name, material area, and material volume fields. But if you see here, material volume is really empty. Material area, however, has some value. This value is going to be your total surface area of the RAM, which means the top surface, the bottom surface, all the side surfaces combined together. Now, if this is the kind of surface area that you are quantifying, well and good. But generally, for bill of quantities, you would really need the top surface area instead of the combined total surface area. To overcome this limitation, many users like to create a ramp using the floor tool. In the next episode, we are going to try to create exactly the same ramp, but instead of using ramp tool, we'll use floor tool. We are also going to check what kind of quantities we are going to get out of a ramp created using floor tool. So please subscribe, stay tuned. I'll see you in the next episode.